In this video, we will discuss a second characterization of a functional limit, also referred to as the epsilon delta definition. You most likely encountered this definition in an earlier calculus course. We begin with a function f from a to r, where a is a subset of real numbers, and a limit point c of the domain set a. Then we say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to l if for every positive epsilon there is, a, there is a positive delta such that if the distance between x and c is strictly positive and not greater than delta and x is in the domain set a, it follows that the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. This looks quite a bit different than our earlier sequential definition, and we will discuss their similarities in a moment. But first, a few pictures to illustrate what the definition requires. We begin with the function f. Here, we are considering a simple linear function graphed on the slide. We also have a limit point of the domain of f, labeled c. We then hope to determine the behavior of the function for domain values near c. It looks like the range values of f get close to the value l, labeled on the y-axis, as the domain values of f get close to c. When we choose a positive epsilon, this creates a neighborhood about l on the y-axis. Now, we must choose a delta so that all domain values within delta units of c correspond to range values within epsilon units of l. One choice of delta for this particular function is depicted on the graph. Graphically, it should be clear that every point in the interval, c minus delta to c plus delta, corresponds to a range value in the interval l minus epsilon to l plus epsilon. Returning to the definition, we want to make a few remarks to connect this to our sequential definition of a functional limit. <clears throat> First, notice that, as with the sequential definition, we only require c to be a limit point of the domain set A, which means that c doesn't necessarily have to be in the domain set A. In other words, the function f may not be defined at c. Next, we never consider domain points equal to c. This is represented by the restriction that the distance between a domain point x and c must be strictly positive. This is also necessary since c may not be in the domain of the function f. Lastly, the conclusion of the definition is intuitively the same as the sequential definition. To call l the limit of f at c, we must show that f of x is close to l whenever x is close to c. As it turns out, our two definitions of a functional limit are logically equivalent meaning that any time a statement can be proved with the sequential definition, then it could have also been proven with the epsilon delta definition, and vice versa. We will prove this equivalence in class. For the remainder of this video, we will consider a few examples. For our examples, we will work with the same limits computed in our last video, so that you can compare the process of verifying limits of functions via sequences with verifying limits using the epsilon delta definition. In the first example, we will show that the limit of the function f of x equals 2x plus 3, as x approaches 1, is equal to 5. As usual, we will outline the ideas needed for the proof and then provide a formal proof. First, let epsilon be positive. We need to find a positive number delta so that if x is a real number, such that the distance between x and 1 is between 0 and delta, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Notice that in this example, the absolute value of f of x minus l is equal to the absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 5. Hence, we want a relationship between x minus c, which in this example equals x minus 1, and absolute value of f of x minus l, which is absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 5. Notice this becomes absolute value of 2x minus 2, which simplifies to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1. We want this to be less than epsilon, and so we should choose delta equal to epsilon divided by 2. We are now ready for our formal proof. To show that the limit of 2x plus 3 as x approaches 1 is 5, let epsilon be positive. Choosing delta equal to epsilon over 2 and letting x be a real number such that the distance between x and 1 is between 0 and delta, 
we have that the distance between f of x and l is equal to the absolute value of 2x plus 3 minus 5, which is equal to absolute value of 2x minus 2. This in turn is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1, which is less than 2 times delta, which is equal to 2 times epsilon over 2, which is equal to epsilon. Therefore, we've found a delta so that, it, so that if x is no more than delta units away from 1, then f of x is no more than epsilon units away from l. Hence, the limit of 2x plus 3 as x approaches 1 is equal to 5. For our second example, we will prove that the limit of x to the 4th plus 2 as x approaches 2 is 18. To get started, let epsilon be a positive number. We want to relate the absolute value of x minus c which in this case is equal to x minus 2, and the absolute value of f of x minus l, which here we have absolute value of x to the fourth plus 2 minus 18. Notice that the absolute value of x to the fourth plus 2 minus 18 is equal to the absolute value of x to the fourth minus 16. Factoring, this becomes the product absolute value of x squared minus 4 times absolute value of x squared plus 4, which further simplifies to absolute value of x minus 2 times absolute value of x plus 2 times absolute value of x squared plus 4. Here we see three variable factors and we must control the size of each of these three pieces. We have control over the first term absolute value of x minus 2 due to the fact that we will assume this quantity is less than a delta to be specified. Suppose then that we have delta 1 equal to 1. This is a fairly arbitrary choice to get us started. The idea here is that we tend to think of delta as a fairly small number and since whole numbers are nice, one seems like a good choice. Our reason for choosing a specific value for delta is to give us an upper bound on the two quantities absolute value of x plus 2 and absolute value of x squared plus 4. Notice this choice will not introduce de epsilon excuse me, to our computation but we will take care of this in a moment with a second choice of delta hence the subscript on this initial choice. So back to our scratch work. If we suppose delta 1 is equal to 1, then we will assume that the distance between x and 2 is between 0 and 1, which implies that x is less than 3. We can then use the triangle inequality to say that the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus 2, which is strictly less than 3 plus 2, which is equal to 5. Similarly, by the triangle inequality, we have the absolute value of x squared plus 4 is less than or equal to the absolute value of x squared plus 4, which is strictly less than 3 squared plus 4, which is equal to 13. So, if the distance between x and 2 is between 0 and 1, then the distance between f of x and l is equal to the absolute value of x to the fourth minus 16, which is equal to the product x, absolute value of x minus 2 times absolute value of x plus 2 times absolute value of x squared plus 4. This is strictly less than 5 times 13 times the absolute value of x minus 2, which is equal to 65 times the absolute value of x minus 2. We want this to be less than epsilon, so we should choose delta 2 to be epsilon over 65. But wait, do we want to choose delta to be 1 or do we want to choose delta to be epsilon over 65? Notice that we use both of these to get the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. To be the most restrictive, to make sure delta is as small as we need to be, we choose delta to be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 65. Notice how much more complicated things became when our function changed from a linear to a quartic. Nevertheless, we made it through. Compare this example using the epsilon delta definition to the sequential definition, which was much shorter. The point here is that even though either definition may be used to verify a limit, you may want to be strategic in your choice. We are ready for the formal proof. To show that the limit of x to the fourth plus 2 as x approaches 2 is 18, let epsilon be positive. We choose delta to be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 65. Then, if x is a real number such that the distance between x and 2 is between 0 and delta, it follows that 
the absolute value of x, which is equal to absolute value of x minus 2 plus 2, which by the triangle inequality is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 2, which is less than 3. Thus, the absolute value of f of x minus l is equal to the absolute value of x to the fourth plus 2 minus 18, which is equal to the absolute value of x to the fourth minus 16, which is equal to the product absolute value of x minus 2 times absolute value of x plus 2 times absolute value of x squared plus 4. By the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to the product x minus 2 times the quantity absolute value of x plus 2 times the quantity absolute value of x squared plus 4. Since the absolute value of x is less than 3, this is all less than 65 times the absolute value of x minus 2, which by our choice for delta is less than 65 times epsilon over 65, which equals epsilon. Hence, the limit of x to the fourth plus 2 as x approaches 2 is 18. I probably should have read through it one time before just to get the, the just to get the clicks. I don't know why I didn't think about that. Oh, I'm still going.